discernment. At this time of transition, be very careful about who and what you are following. In fact, if you are following at all, that is the first indication that you are off track. For those of you who are still the students of gurus, we recommend discernment. This is no longer the time of great spiritual teachers. It is now the time of great spirits instead. The shift from master slash student to just plain master may cause a temporary unemployment problem in India and elsewhere, but do not be alarmed. The true masters of light will make the shift with ease and will welcome your upcoming graduation with the same relief that they welcome their much-deserved retirement. Others of you consider Guru's pass and are following disembodied, channeled entities instead. Again we advise discernment. Many of our forces have gained entry to this plane through the use of channeling. However we are not only ones who have gained entry this way. There are many disembodied energies who are masquerading as the light and throwing their confusing two cents into the global pot. Being without a body is not an instant membership card granting the bearer status among the forces of light. There are an inordinate number of entities running loose right now, channeled and otherwise, who have no bodies and are solely interested in an opportunity to use and abuse yours. An important key in dealing with these energies is to approach as a master and not as a student. If you stand in the truth of that identity, you are very unlikely to fall for a lie. Always test the energies you are in contact with to make sure they are not just fourth dimensional freeloaders with a predisposition to remain in the dark. If an entity shuns the light and avoids standing in its presence, acting somewhat like a vampire who has just been confronted with a crucifix, you can be fairly certain they are not in the service of the forces of light. Anything that cannot tolerate the light is not assisting the light and should be taken to the light as soon as possible. Check your behavior and thought forms as well. Much of what you have considered to be the product of your personality and upbringing may actually be the behavior of a fourth dimensional entity that is time sharing your body. This is a particularly important issue right now because there is a great deal of disturbance in the fourth dimension which is leaking into the third. Please see the second note under UFO in chapter 1 for more information in the dimensions. This is the unfortunate result of a little interdimensional misunderstanding. As the fifth dimension continues in its spiritual descent into the third dimension, it is now passing through the frontiers of the fourth. Some of the fourth dimension's darker denizens believe this incoming light to be a threat and mistake their imminent transformation as a serious assault. A number of them have consequently formed a resistance movement that is fighting back, even though we are not fighting at all. The temporary case this has caused is making the fourth dimension look like a bad brawl in the Star Wars bar, and some of its disembodied refugees have made their way into the third dimension. Learn to recognize these energies and stay clear of them. If a disembodied entity manipulates you in any way, or wants your following at the price of your freedom, that entity is not on our team and doesn't have your best interests at heart. And the energy that is not contributing to the realization of your magnificence and mastery is not a part of this mission and is in the service of the dark forces. If an entity fails to meet this criteria, escort that being into the light. Through your alignment with the light, you are in a superior position in relation to these temporarily confused forces. You have the power to boost them and lovingly assure them into the light. You can do this by identifying the entities, breaking any agreements you may have made with them, and by an internal visualization, leading them into the light. This act will serve to assist the mission in its peaceful and efficient descent through the fourth dimension while hastening its way to arrival in the third. Do not misinterpret this information. It is the light that is superior to these fourth dimensional forces, and not your winsome personality. Pitting yourself against them, as if you were superior, will invariably end in your resounding defeat. Call upon the forces of light, in all your dealings with these energies. Your success will then be guaranteed, and there will subsequently be less mess, to clean up. Note, some of our special forces units, 
have published materials containing technologies to assist you during this crucial transitional period. If you are interested, please write to us at Mission Control, and we will see that you receive information about their publications. Our address appears at the end of this manual. Landing instructions. Some of you are in such a state of shock from finding yourselves in the third dimension that in protest you have refused to land. Mission Control would like to point out that you are useless to the mission if you are still circling the planet in a holding pattern. We would also like to point out that it was your choice to sign up for this mission, not ours. From your frantic transmissions, we have gathered that you are nervous about catching whatever it is they seem to have on this planet. Although we understand your anxiety, we would prefer to discuss your imminent danger after you have made your landing. Technically mission control cannot interfere with your free will. However we can reassign you. You may be transferred, if you so wish, to another dysfunctional planet. Unfortunately most of the positions we have open right now actually make this place look good. The mere mention of the possibility of reopen for the boot camp on Planet X is usually enough to coax most of you out of the skies and on with the mission. However, if you are still unwilling to make your approach, please contact Flight Control. Maybe they can talk you through landing. Culture Shock Culture Shock is unavoidable, as you begin to awaken to our presence, as well as your own. Although you already are veteran travelers of the dimensions, your true identity will be a news flash to your third dimensional consciousnesses. The impact of recognizing your multidimensional nature will send ripples of apprehension through your limited sense of self, given the prospect of a sudden interfinanced move to Calcutta for greater appeal. Even though it is only the security of your insecurity that is at risk, try telling that one to your emotional body. The emotional body may be more inclined to fling itself off a cliff than deal like an adult with this incoming vibrational shift. Culture shock is temporary, but we mention it so that you can prepare. And while you are at it, get ready for the additional shock that mission control is populated by largely non-human staff. The human race is a root race that extends throughout the worlds, but it is only one of many. For a people who have not yet adjusted to the differences among their own kind, our presence may seem an alarming act of brotherhood you are being asked to face. If it is any consolation, many of you on this mission are merely disguised as humans for the sake of this planetary transition. We hope that information helps your personality make its adjustment, even if it doesn't exactly cheer up your beleaguered emotional system. Also keep in mind that the culture shock of awakening multidimensionally is nowhere near as dreadful as the shock you felt when you first woke up to find yourself here.